Lesson 3.9, Subtract Decimals. We can use place value to subtract decimals. We stack the decimal numbers on top of each other in vertical form, lining up the decimal points. We start with the farthest right place value, and we regroup if needed. You can see our decimal points are all lined up. 9 minus 2 is 7, 8 minus 5 is 3, 2 minus 0 is 2. We have 2 and 37 hundredths. Trailing zeros are zeros that we insert on the right side of a decimal. And we can insert trailing zeros to the right of a decimal without changing its value, so all of the decimals will have the same amount of digits. If we have 7 and 6 tenths, and we want to subtract 2 and 15 hundredths, we can put a trailing zero here, and then we can subtract and regroup. And if you missed our video on trailing zeros, it's linked in the description, video 3.4. We learned to model decimal subtraction with base 10 blocks, or a quick drawing, in video 3.6, and that's linked in the description. We can make a quick drawing to check our subtraction. We had 5 and 31 hundredths, and we subtracted 1 and 19 hundredths. Our answer was 4 and 12 hundredths. We have 5, so we made 5 squares. We had 3 tenths, so we made 3 lines for tenths. And we had 1 hundredth, we made 1 little green circle for a hundredth. To subtract one and nineteen hundredths, we had to regroup one of these tenths as ten hundredths. We need to take away nine of them, so we circle nine and cross them out, and that's going to leave that one little extra one here because we made ten. We only crossed out nine. Now we need to get rid of a tenth, so we cross out a tenth. We need to get rid of one whole, so we cross out a square, and we're left with four squares for the four whole, one tenth over here that's not circled for the one tenth, and two hundredths, which is the green one and the brown one. And we can also use addition, which is an inverse operation, to check our subtraction. What we do is we take our difference, four and twelve hundredths, we subtract the subtrahen, and if we get the menu in, we know we did it correctly. We subtract decimals just as we would subtract whole numbers, except we must line up the decimal points to make sure we're subtracting the correct digits. We have 473 minus 146, we get 327. We're going to do the same thing with the decimals, the only difference is we have decimal points lined up here. We start by subtracting the column with the least place value. Here we started with the ones, here we're going to start with the hundredths and we re regroup when needed. We have 3 and 27 hundredths. In video 3.4, we learned to round decimals. In video 3.7, we learned to use rounded decimals to estimate decimal sums and differences, and they're linked in the description if you missed them. We can use an estimation to know if our actual difference is reasonable. This 9 is going to tell the three whole ones here to round up to a 4, and this 1 is going to tell that 1 to stay the same. We have 4 minus 1, which is 3. So our difference should be about 3. We subtract 2, and we need to take 3 away, but we can't. So we regroup from the tenths place. It becomes an 8. This becomes 12 hundredths. We subtract 3 and get 9 hundredths. We have 8 tenths take away 1 tenth. That's 7 tenths. We have 3 minus 1. That's a 2. and it makes sense because our estimate is close to our difference. 2 and 79 hundredths is very close to 3. If we don't line up decimal points correctly, we may subtract the wrong digits. Here we have 22 minus 3 and 6 tenths. We have two digits here and two digits here. We might accidentally stack them like this, but that's wrong. 22 is a whole number and 3 is a whole number, so we would have decimal points lined up like this. And we can insert a trailing zero, so there will be the same amount of digits to the right side. We have 0 tenths minus 6 tenths. We need to regroup from the 1's place. This 2 becomes a 1, and now we have 10 tenths minus 6 tenths. That's 4 tenths. We have 1 minus 3, and we can't. 
So we regroup from the tens place, the two becomes a one, this one becomes an eleven, and eleven minus three is eight, and we drop down the one ten. We have eighteen and four tenths. Make sure our decimal points were lined up. In video 3.2, which is linked in the description, we learn to read and write decimals in standard form, expanded form, and word form. We can write these words as an equation to find the difference. But this is going to be very tricky because of the wording. We have two, so that's two whole, and that's our decimal point, 68 hundredths. And it's subtracted from five and four tenths. We have five whole, and is our decimal point, and four tenths. This is being subtracted from this. That means this is the subtrahend, and that's the minuend. So the five and four tenths is going to be on the top. We have nothing here, so we can insert a trailing zero. We do our subtraction just as we would as if this was whole numbers with three digits and three digits. We get two and seventy-two hundredths. We can check with addition. We use our difference and our subtrahend. We add them together. And if they're equal to the minuend, we know we did it correctly. When an equation is given in sentence form, we can stack the decimals in vertical form on scratch paper to subtract them. We have 19 and 3 tenths minus 4 and 57 hundredths. We stack them up in vertical form, lining up the decimal points. We subtract them as we would any whole numbers, regrouping when necessary, and we can use trailing zeros. This is 3 tenths, this is 57 hundredths. We can put a trailing zero there so we have the same number of digits. We get 14 and 73 hundredths. Here we have 34 and 19 hundredths minus 6 and 59 hundredths. We subtract just as we would for whole numbers, regrouping when necessary, but make sure our decimal points are lined up. So we've got them stacked very nicely. We're going to start in the hundredths place. 9 minus 9 is 0. We have 1 tenth minus 5 tenths. We can't do that, so we need to regroup from the ones place. That's going to become a 3. That's going to become an 11. 11 tenths minus 5 tenths is 6 tenths. We put our decimal point in a straight line. We have 3 minus 6. We can't do that, so we're going to regroup from here. That 3 is going to become a 2. This 3 is going to become a 13. Now we have 13 ones minus 6 ones. That's 7 ones. We have 2 tens, which drop down. And we can remove trailing zeros from our difference without changing its value. We have 27 and 60 hundredths. We can just make it 27 and 6 tenths. Precipitation is the release of water from the sky. It could be liquid, such as rain or sleet, and it could be solid, such as hail or snow. The average annual precipitation for Death Valley located in eastern California, is 2 and 3,600 inches. The average annual precipitation for Seattle, Washington, is 37 and 49 hundredths inches. How much more precipitation does Seattle get on average than Death Valley? So we have our Seattle number, decimal number, and we're going to subtract the Death Valley one to find the difference between them. We can estimate this 4 is going to tell the 7 to stay the same, so it's going to round to 37. This 3 is going to tell the 2 to stay the same, so it's going to round to 2. We subtract and get 35 inches. Now why did I round to the 1's place? I had to round to the 1's place because there's no 10's here. I can't round this one to the 10's place. Whatever I round this one to, I have to round that one to. So because there's only 1's here, they both got rounded to the 1's place. We do our subtraction, and 9 minus 6 is 3, 4 minus 3 is 1, 7 minus 2 is 5. We drop down the 3 tens. We have 35 and 13 hundredths inches per year. That's very close to our estimate, so our difference is reasonable because it's close to our estimate. 
I know my regular subscribers have seen this a lot, but for those of you who haven't, we can turn a sheet of lined paper sideways to keep our place values in the correct column. That way when we're subtracting decimals, we keep our place values straight. That'll help us so we don't make a mistake. So remember to keep your decimal points lined up and remember when it's in sentence form, we can put it in vertical form on scratch paper. Our next lesson, 3.10, we're going to use addition or subtraction to describe a pattern or create a sequence with decimals. I think you can do this. Just remember, it's just like whole numbers except we have decimal points. Have a great day. Bye.